Uh, good morning, everybody. Glad you're here with us. Hopefully, this will be a training that you have looked forward to just as much as I have. I want to welcome our guests this morning, uh, Curtis Brandon and hey, also good Antoine uh, Broughton from the, uh, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, where they're going to talk to us about how to do business with them today. So if you have any questions, be sure and put those in the chat and we will address those just as quickly as possible as well. And um, really without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Curtis and let him start sharing his and we can get this show on the road. Thank you, good morning, everybody. Uh, so good morning, everybody too. This is Antoine Broughton. I'm the uh, director for VA Osbu's Direct Access Program and Strategic Outreach and Communication. Uh, with me today is my colleague, uh, Curtis Brandon. He is a member of my strategic outreach and communications team. And so what we're going to be talking to you today about is doing business with the VA and some of the services that VA offers to veteran-owned small businesses. So as soon as my colleague gets his uh, the, the screen up, we'll go ahead and begin. Thank you. Can everybody see my screen? Can you see my screen, Antoine? Yes, I can. Thank you, Curtis. All right. Then. So first, um, the the VA Osdebu, short name um, VA Osdebu. Our long name is the Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization. And so, what we do, we are the VA's advocacy office for veteran-owned small businesses. Now, um, many people don't realize that. The VA does a variety of uh, you know businesses. We have a variety of operations. We are primarily in the healthcare system. Uh, the VA operates the country's largest healthcare system with uh, VA medical centers and community outreach uh, clinics uh, throughout the nation. Um, because the VA does a variety, you know, I should say, buy a variety of services. We utilize a variety of businesses in different socioeconomic categories, small, large, 8A, women-owned, hub zone, the full gamut. Um, and so we have a saying in the VA that veterans first and not veterans only. And what do we mean by that? As it relates to procurements, we will do business with a variety of businesses, not just veteran-owned small businesses. You can be just a regular small business, never served in the military. You can be minority-owned, 8A, hub zone, LGBTQ. It does not matter. We have socioeconomic goals for a wide swath of socioeconomic categories. And so don't believe that if you are not a veteran, for those in the audience who are not a veteran, um, uh, that we don't do business uh, with non-veteran companies. We do have a a program, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the slides, where we, um, uh, you know, we do we do have a program uh, wherein we set aside contracts for veteran-owned small businesses, and they have to meet some criteria, which I'll talk about earlier. So let's go to uh, let me talk about next. You know what my particular office comprises of. So there are six program areas. Um, the two in the blue that you see are those that I personally oversee. Um, toward the bottom, you will see the Center for Verification and Evaluation, CVE. And many people will be familiar, whether it be directly or indirectly, with CVE, because that is the office within Ozdebu that processes applications submitted by veterans like you to be a VA verified, to receive designation as a VA verified service disabled veteran owned small business or a uh, service disabled veteran owned small business. That is an application process, meaning you can apply just because you apply um, does not necessarily mean that you're going to get approved. I will tell you though, uh, we're running at an extremely high approval rate for, for some time now, okay? So, um, you know, those are the, the, the program offices we have. The other programs you see here, I won't spend too much time to talk about that, but all of those program offices has one thing in common. And the reason why you see these in a circle, because what you don't see here in the middle of the circle is you. 
you the veteran. So, you know, take your name, take your face and put it in the middle of that circle and everything that we do circles around you. So one of the things that we pride ourselves on is putting the veteran at the center of everything we do. OK, next, I'm going to talk about the our, our strategic approach to doing um, you know, business um, and also how we interface with the veteran uh, owned small business community and veterans at large. So here in uh, VA Azibu, we have developed using the secretary strategies, we have carved out four unique uh, but yet simple themes that we will center everything that we do around. And it spells out COVE, C-O-V-E. First one being customer service, next being outreach, next being verification, and next thing being engagement. And so let me just spend some time explaining to you how those things play out. So SOC's primary focus is, like I said, strategic communications and evaluations, okay? Um, and we also work with uh, business development. So when you look at the customer service tenant, right, the C, customer service, we take a deliberate step to ensure each day to sustain and build upon the relationships with our customers, which underpins the VA statement about our care. As it relates to outreach, we make ourselves available through outreach events like today's to interact with veterans and provide them useful information in a variety of topics related to small businesses. Bear in mind, we also do a lot of referrals to the Small Business Administration because they are the federal government's chief advocate for small businesses, regardless of socioeconomic type. Next, V, we have verification. And as I stated before, verification, we operate the process to verify, which is a difference from certify or self-certification. We verify veteran-owned small businesses, and in doing so, help them become eligible to compete for set aside contracts, which I'll talk about later. The last one is engagement. In every interaction we see as an opportunity to help fulfill the promise made by Abraham Lincoln, being to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. So as I said, these areas comprise the acronym COVE and they are the basis by which we focus our efforts to generate momentum we keep veterans at the center of our daily operation, and that really drives everything that we do. So the next thing I want to talk about is the Vets First program, okay? So the Vets First program is a congressionally mandated program, and it basically says that the VA will set aside contracts for companies, veteran-owned companies, that have been verified as a service-disabled veteran-owned company or veteran-owned company. So that's the Vets First contracting program. And so if you are a verified company, okay, you can compete, meaning you can submit a bid for a set-aside contract. You'll also hear periodically about the rule of two. And that basically is a Supreme Court of the United States ruling that says, basically, underpins the Veteran First contracting program. And in essence, if there are two or more VA verified service disabled veteran owned businesses or veteran owned small businesses, that particular procurement has to be set aside to enable those two or more companies to submit bids, qualified bids to do the work. And so that is an advantage that as a VA verified company, veteran owned small businesses have an advantage with the VA as compared to the other federal agencies. Okay. So next, I want to talk about the verification program. Now, the verification program is a process wherein a applicant, a veteran who owns a business, submits required documents and they say, hey, I want to be designated as a VA verified SDVOSB or VOSB, as you see here on the screen. And there's basically four stages to the process. I won't spend too much time talking about that, um, with the exception of know that we have a variety of resources available to help veteran-owned small businesses apply and ideally achieve the status of a VA verified company. Amongst those things is a network of assistance counselors 
the VA Osdebu office has partnered with procurement technical assistance centers and other veteran service groups throughout the country. And we train those individuals. It's only a set individuals, not everybody in those particular entities. We train the individuals that they designate to help veterans submit an application for what we call verification. Okay. They get, for the most part, the same training that I give to the staff here at VA and CVE. So if you are going through the process and you want help, help is available. What you will see toward the end of this presentation are some resources. And amongst those, you will see the uh, website URLs where you can um, get information about the verification assistance program, the verification assistance counselors, and other aspects as it relates to applying for verification. I will tell you, I worked in CVE for about five, six years. I oversaw all of the customer service support features to include the verification assistance program. I tell small businesses all the time. I personally do not believe you need a lawyer to submit an application for verification. I know many, many firms have spent, you know, thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars to get a lawyer to help them submit their application. And it's really not necessary. There are three basic tenements that go into reviewing an applicant's, uh, uh, applicant's uh, assertion that they want to be a VA verified SDVOSB or VOSB. Those three areas are eligibility, ownership, and control. Eligibility is fairly simple. Did you serve in the military? A lot of people don't realize if you even served in a service academy for a few months and got injured and was never able to enter the military, you could still be classified as a veteran. So most, most individuals can meet the, um, the requirement of eligibility. Biggest thing there, not have been discharged uh, from the military with a BCD. That's it, okay? The next one is ownership. Again, that is an area that in many cases, most applicants can meet fairly easy. Are you the 51% owner, and that's a that number is very deliberate and specific. So if you are not the 51% owner, as um, as corroborated by your formation documents and things like that, you cannot get verified. Again, in many cases, that is not a problem for a lot of applicants. Next one is control, and that is where some firms um, encounter difficulty. So when we're talking about control, basically there's a there's a a uh, a concept that's called a quorum. And under a quorum, let's say that there are um, four people that that are co-owners for this company. And under a quorum, you may have a quorum, um, you know, language in your in your operating you know documents that says there's four of us. If three or more people vote to do one thing versus the other, the three, the basically the majority vote wins, right? For VA verification, if your business documents have something like that, you would not be able to get verified because in every situation, in any case, the veteran, the 51% owner has to have full and unchallengeable and immutable control over that company. So they would have to have what we call a quorum restriction that says, regardless of how many people are on the board, okay, the veteran who has to be the 51% owner has to have the final say in what he or she says goes as it relates to the operating of the company. So those are just some things that I wanted to highlight to you. Just remember eligibility, ownership, and control this information and other aspects of the verification program is found on our website and my colleague is going to put that in the chat here in a few minutes for us after we get to the next slide okay our acquisition support team in osdebu does many things the biggest thing is market research and so many of you in the audience may be asking so hey let me ask you you know how does market research you know help me as a small business it does help you because 
by you responding to what we call electronic request for information, EFRIs, you let the, a VA program office and program manager know, one, your company exists, and two, you may have an interest in um, providing the product or service that the RFI is being sent out for. Bear in mind, an RFI is not a request for solicitations or proposal. This is how the VA and how the government seeks to get information about a product or service that it is uh, considering to put out on the street as a solicitation. So you want to answer those uh, RFIs or the EFRIs as they come out because it makes it, it helps the program office develop what we call the acquisition strategy. How are they going to buy that product or service? How, um, you know, what uh, salient characteristics do most companies who uh, provide that product or service have? Are there any special qualifications that's needed for that? How many companies that can do the work have those special qualifications? So all those type of things is how the VA and federal governments use the RFI or the EFRI to assess the market. Let's go to the next slide there. Direct access program. So in Osdebu, the direct access program, which is uh, the other portfolio that I lead, we put on small business events. We help veteran owned small businesses by putting on small business events for a variety of things, not just the VA. So you may be asking, so how does that help me? How does the you know VA Osdebu putting on or hosting a small business event, let's say with United States Post Office or with AT&T. How does that help me as a veteran owned small business? I'm glad you asked that question. Think about this. Right now, most veteran owned small businesses, they go through an activity on a regular basis called capture management. And what they're trying to do in capture management, they're trying to find and identify and potentially make decisions on bidding on a procurement opportunity that fits their business line, okay? So imagine if you want to do business with VA, and then you also want to do business with the United States Postal Office, and then you may also want to consider having some type of business relationship with AT&T. Those are three separate you know, interactions that you're trying to have using cold calls and other means. The reason why we partner with industry and other government agencies is because Twofold. One, we want to be the voice of advocacy for the utilization of veteran owned small business. And we're able to do that. So when these particular entities say, hey, we are interested in finding um, veteran owned small business to do A, B, or C, we can say, you know what? We can help you. You bring the procurement opportunity. We will bring the logistics to help put on the event. And it becomes a what I call a trifecta of wins. The buyer, whether it be the VA, industry, or other government agency wins because they are now identifying companies, and this is where Avis Key Road comes in, companies, and ideally for us, we're going to help make sure they understand you know, that there are veteran-owned small businesses that potentially can do the work, okay? So that's how they win. We win because we want to actively advocate for the utilization of veteran-owned small businesses. So one of the things that we do when we have um, another government agency or industry approach us about doing an event, we automatically send that event information out to all of the firms and the vendors information pages, VIP. And the VIP database is the database that lists all of the firms, which is about 14,000 firms right about now, that have been verified by the VA, okay? So that is one of the things that we do. What you see here before you, uh, the National Veteran Small Business Engagement, which is our national event, that is the largest of its kind in my mind that's conducted by the federal, any federal agency. Um, the last one that we did was in 2019, didn't do one in 2020 and in 2021 because of COVID. But during the National Veteran Small Business Event, we will have anywhere from 2,800 to 3,500 people show up. It's a immersive market research environment, meaning that everybody is there to do one thing, assess the market. 
the buyers are assessing the market from the perspective of what vendors can provide the product or service they need. Vendors are assessing the market with respect to what potential streams of revenue, what new streams that they're going to throw their procurement hook in to potentially get a contract. And so throughout the, throughout the National Veteran Small Business event, that's the opportunity where business are being able to have those conversations uh, from a large setting to a small setting. Okay, One of the events that we do there is called a business opportunity session, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And that's where the buyer is telling an audience of every, anywhere from you know 50 to 500 people, this is what I'm looking to buy. These are the special qualifications, so forth and so on. The next uh, activity that would happen at a national event, as well as our smaller events that we do virtually now are the scheduled one-on-ones and typically that will be a session wherein there's either one or more buyers from the same company or entity talking to one seller one representative it's a 20-minute conversation sometimes 30 and that uh seller has the opportunity to tell the buyer here's how i can help you meet your mission here's how i can solve your problem okay so it's a little bit more immersive than an elevator speech. Um, it allows the buyer to, to ask questions to assess how much of a good fit this firm is to whether it be um, uh, the product or service that they're providing. And in some cases, when we're talking about industry, sometimes they're looking for subcontractors and partners. So that 20 minute or 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session is the opportunity to have those conversations. And think about it, ladies and gentlemen, the National Veteran Small Business event in the past has been anywhere from a, uh, two and a half days to three days. And the only thing that everybody's doing and every activity that's scheduled, a part of that is about market research on both sides of the spectrum, buyer to seller and seller to buyer. So next I wanna talk about the, um, the strategic communications and outreach team, which is another team that I lead. And like we're doing today, we do outreach, we do you know training, we provide small businesses with a capability statement review. So we're about business development. Many of the services that we offer are for those new and young businesses, just starting out, that has established themselves as a business. So that means they have a DUNS number, they have an EIN, they've done all the prerequisites identified by SBA as, Here's what you want to do to start a business, right? So we 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 uh, develop training, basic training about doing business with VA and some other things to help them. And then the the what I would call the immature company. So they've been operating for a while. Um, they may have a couple of contracts, you know, small in dollar value, and they're looking for some you know some pointers based on the training that we provide um, to help them continue to grow. You know, we, we will uh, teach them where to go to look for um, resource information as it relates to procurement opportunities and things like that. So many of the the training that we do, I should say all the training we do is really dealing with that young new company and that what, what I would call kind of a, of a of an immature kind of adolescent company that's got their feet up under them, but they're still growing. They're still uh, building. Um, they haven't gotten to a good rhythm of you know, capture management, you know, see a contract, uh, bid for the contract and successfully, you know, get the award. So that's what we do on that end. Next, I'm going to talk about the um, the procurement, excuse me, the framework for success. And the framework for success is really just some some ideas that we put together. This is no secret sauce. Um, you won't necessarily see this, um, you know, espoused by another small business entity, but there are just some some um, elements that we believe that a small business should consider as they are preparing and continually looking for procurement opportunities, okay? And they, they are the awareness, the risk mitigation, access, procurement mechanisms, and performance. And so I'll talk about those briefly. So when you think about awareness, that is being aware about the upcoming procurement opportunities, you know? You know, where are those happening? Understanding and leveraging information about potential contacts and regulatory guidance that's issued by the various acquisition offices in whether it be the federal market space 
or in a similar entity out in industry, okay? The second phase, risk mitigation, a vendor should consider their business profile. Is the firm considered a high risk in some areas, such as past performance? So when you think about risk mitigation, you're thinking about what things make my company less attractive to a buyer. And knowing those things, then you want to take deliberate steps to mitigate or eliminate those things. All right. So we do con uh, conduct a webinar titled Risk Mitigation, and the next session occurs on September 15th. So I strongly encourage you, and my colleague will put the hyperlink to that particular session in the chat here. You know, if you have an interest in hearing more about risk mitigation, please sign up for that. Okay. When we talk about access, as I mentioned before, VA Azdebu, my office specifically, provides small businesses access to procurement decision makers. You'll hear that term used a lot in the VA, procurement decision makers. Again, PDM, and those are the buyers. So anybody can be a buyer, okay? I could be a buyer today and maybe not a buyer next week. If I'm in a market for, let's say, office chairs, you know, for 50 or 100 office chairs, today I'm a buyer. I may not be a buyer for another, you know, three years or whatever the case may be. Um, at such time as when I need to replace those chairs. So when you hear about PDM, think about the person that's either going to actually do the buying or the person that's going to significantly influence the development of a contract that's going to seek professional services, you know, uh, whether it be products or services. Okay. Next, you know, understanding the procurement mechanisms. So this is how a business um, really considers, you know, what procurement mechanisms out there and which ones do I, as an entrepreneur, want to be a part of? You've got things like the federal supply schedule. You've got GSA schedules. Um, you have enterprise-type contracts like Vector, uh, which is a wide array of, of business lines that the VA may need you know, professional services for. And another one would be like T4NG, which is primarily um, IT-type stuff. So when we talk about procurement mechanisms, we're talking about you know, what things can you do as a small business to, one, you got to be aware of these mechanisms, and two, make a business decision which ones are best for your company based on its current standing growth and projected growth, and then align yourself with those things so that, again, that's another hook in the water, okay? Can you take, uh, you know, micro purchases for those type of services that are, you know, in, in you know, you know $5,000 or less? Those are the type of things. So if you're in those business lines, are you are you postured in the best way possible to enable the government to do business with you? And if not, make you know conscious decisions to to bring about those conditions that 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 uh, help you do that. OK, um, the last one we're going to talk about is, you know, uh, CPARs, you know, when we're talking about, you know, um, performance. OK. So CPARS is an evaluation of a prime contractor. So whoever's the main um, company on a contract, you know, it assesses their ability not just to do the work, but do the work in an, an efficient, effective manner. You want to have good CPARS, okay? Because it's like if you got a bad referral from, from a job, you don't expect if you uh, give that job's name to a, a prospective employer that they're going to hire you. So when you think about CPARS, think about it from that perspective. Now, I know some of you may be asking, hey, so how do I get CPARS if I'm a subcontractor? You can't. But what you can do when you uh, develop your capability statement, you want to talk about the fact that you are a subcontractor. And ideally, assuming that the contract you are subcontractor on perform well, you want to talk about those things. Um, you don't want to embellish the truth. You don't want to say that you did certain work and you really didn't. But you want to speak about how you contributed to the overall success of that contract and add that in there. That's how you benefit from being a subcontractor or a teaming partner. So it's not just because you don't have CPARs. You're like, hey, I, I don't have CPARs, so I, I can never make that shift from um, subcontractor to, to prime. That's not necessarily true. There are other things you can do, and it's really just documenting those things on your on your capability statement, um, which is basically an appetizer for a buyer to say, hey, here's what I have done. Here's my experience. I have worked as a subcontractor on a particular contract or I have been a part of, you know, team, you know, um, ABC company, you know, gigantic ABC company. And here's the things that I did. So that's how you, um, you know, set yourself up for performance. 
okay? So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is our contact information, and then we're gonna open up the floor to questions. So that is our number, 866-584-2344. We have a call agent um, that's available from eight o'clock in the morning to six o'clock at evening, Eastern Coast, East Coast time. And if you want more information, about you know what we do in uh, the business development or need assistance with the capability statement, want to get training on that, send us an email here. So with fur without further ado, I want to open up the floor for some questions and some interaction with the audience. So questions. Any questions? Anton, I haven't seen any come up on the in the chats just yet either. Um, a lot of times they, just, they have questions after the facts, and this will be recorded and, and sent out to everybody so they can get okay. a hold of it. Too. Let me see, I'm looking at string here. Definitely send them out to you. Try. Okay. I'm not seeing any questions. I don't see none either. You did a wonderful job. Okay. Somebody just asked, can I call in? Um, I will leave that up to the facilitator of the event yeah, to provide that information. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Yeah, Here's something I want to talk about. Um, something else while people are kind of digesting. I know it was a lot of information. We do small business events all of the time. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, we do events for the VA to showcase the procurement needs that we have. We do events with um, other government agencies. We recently did an event with the United States Post Office. We also do, you know, events with, you know, large businesses, um, uh, AT&T, Verizon, General Dynamics, IT, just to name a few, where they're looking for small businesses to do business with. So um, what my colleague's going to do here in a few minutes, uh, Curtis, if you would please, um, put in there the um, URL for the DAP events uh, landing page. Okay. So if there are no questions, let me turn it back over to our esteemed uh, host. Thank you for the opportunity. Do you have any questions you want me to address the audience? I don't have any. I just really appreciate you guys helping us out with this today. And I, apparently we've got some questions uh, from one guy, but he's wanted to call in. We Unfortunately, our platform does not allow for call in so we can do it through the chat or they can make contact with you afterwards or make contact with me and we'll be sure and answer those questions for them with no problem. Great. Great. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, then I think we'll conclude from here. Um, again, my name is Antoine Broughton. I'm joined by Mr. Curtis Brandon. I want to thank everybody you know, for their service, for those uh, who serve. Um, uh, you know, it's on. I served myself for 28 years in the Navy. Go Navy. And um, I, I recognize that, you know, your service, you know, to the nation um, and being a veteran, whether it be for, you know, four years or 28 years or, or greater, um, it's really a commitment to your, you know, uh, a indication of your commitment and dedication to the country. So I want to thank everybody for their service. And um, Darren, uh, without, uh, you know, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Great. Definitely. I appreciate you, Curtis and uh, Antoine, for being here today and sharing this information with us. If, again, if you have any questions, be sure and contact me or contact either one of them through the uh, listings that they gave you on that last screen, which we'll get that back out to you again too uh, once this spot recording is completed. But if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to us anytime. We'll answer those as quickly as we can. And again, thank you so much, Curtis and Antoine, for being here today and your assistance. Everybody well, have a great day. Thank you. You have a great day too. Be safe out there, everybody.